kid. Seriously. <laughs> Welcome one and all to episode five of the Star Wars in Review podcast, which is the only podcast in America or otherwise that never claps for the opposing party and is most certainly treasonous from a certain point of view. I am Maya Madrid. Across the way is my better podcasting half, Luke Neitzel, and every so often he and I get together to discuss some of the latest Star Wars news, answer your kids seriously serious questions, and analyze an episode from the Clone Wars cartoon. Neitzel, what's up, buddy? Not too much. I was in North Carolina last week. Take your shirt off. Yeah, woo. I got to go by the NASCAR Hall of Fame on the way to the conference I was at, which was pretty unspectacular. I have to say, I was really excited to go to North Carolina for a while because it is very cold in Wisconsin, and you would think you're going to the south, and if I'm going to tolerate the things I see in the south, including horrible street names, that I would at least get some warm weather, and then it turned out it was colder in North Carolina than it was here. <laughs> so that was fabulous. Not that I went outside, because I was in a conference room for 10 hours every day. That's great for me. This is the uh, day that I finally came through on my bet with my daughter. She went Eagles, Boom Madrid did. I went Patriots. And so my penance was to work today. I had to wear pink nail polish, and so I'm sporting it right now. She made me... Come nice. here with it still on. I'll be taking it off tonight. But she wanted you to see how beautiful it is. So was the red shirt strategic? Because when you hold it up to the red shirt, it makes it look a little more red. It totally wasn't. It had nothing to do with it. I nice. wore a black shirt today, well, so it really popped. Well, you know, the pink brings your eyes out, which Thanks. is nice. All right, so let's get right to uh, the news. According to StarWars.com, David Benioff and D.B. Weiss are going to write their own set of Star Wars movies separate from Ryan Johnson's upcoming trilogy and also separate from the Skywalker saga, which may or may not be coming to an end with Episode Nine. Quote from Kathleen Kennedy, David and Dan are some of the best storytellers working today. Their command of complex characters, depth of story, and riches of mythology will break new ground and boldly push Star Wars in ways I find incredibly exciting. The writers have stated they will get started as soon as Game of Thrones is completed. I have a couple questions for you here. First of all, what is your initial reaction as a big Game of Thrones fan that they're coming to the Star Wars universe? I'm excited. As you mentioned, I love Game of Thrones. I've enjoyed it since the get-go. They do a great job handling an insane amount of characters and story and plots in a far-off world. So I think they're a great fit for it. I know their other show they were going to do on HBO got uh, nixed over content protests. So they, they had they had an opening that they could go in and do this. And I think this is a great fit. And we, we had mentioned in earlier episodes about finding filmmakers. And I wouldn't say these guys are up and coming because they're obviously big successes. But pulling filmmakers from places that we don't traditionally see them to do these kind of big budget Hollywood movies. This is the exact type of thing I'm talking about. Now they're not directing, they're writing and producing, but I have total faith in them to bring in high quality directors that'll take what they can put on paper and make something fantastic. So this is, this is spectacular. You know, the next thing I'm going to, I'm going to hear is that they announced they signed Carrie Fukunaga or Steve McQueen to be directors of these movies because those are the two other directors that I, I absolutely love and will see anything that they do along with uh, you know our guy from a couple episodes ago, Denny uh, Villeneuve. Th- this is just, a, it's an exciting time, I think. I'm really, you know, I'm, I'm a big Last Jedi guy, so I'm excited for Ryan Johnson to have his own trilogy, to think that they're going to have their own trilogy is really exciting to me, and this is a, this is a fun time for me to be a Star Wars fan. I think I tend to agree with you. I was very happy that they weren't directing, and I'm still holding out hope for uh, Reed Moreno to to get that spot. I'd like to see somebody a little different than white guys, but I'm I'm excited that really quality writers are getting involved in the Star Wars universe. Second question I got for you, is this move going to single a more adult Star Wars set of movies, and is that a good thing? That's a good question. I don't think, they're always going to be PG, is my guess. They're not, they want the kids, they want the toys, they want all those things. So I think we're going to see things similar to Rogue One, to The Last Jedi, to Empire Strikes Back, to the latter half of Revenge of the Sith, that have dark, tense moments, but I don't think we're going to see this go, you know, Matrix-level, rated R, those type of violence and, and themes and whatnot. So I think they'll be able to bring a, a, a good blend. It, it's not going to be Game of Thrones. I'm not expecting it to be that level of violence and sex and nudity. And what excites me about this is just 
their mastery of such a multi-layered universe because that's what star wars is and to be doing major arcs like that just seems like something they can handle and even in a pg-13 world i think they'll be great at it so this just popped into my head this wasn't one of the set questions that i had for you how much do you worry that these guys leaned on the author of all those game of thrones books for the information rather than coming up i i don't know I'm, i'm not a big game of thrones fan but what I understand is Martin, I think is his name, is the guy who yep, wrote George all the George R. R. Martin. The deal with the beard and stuff. He wrote all the books. And so they just kind of adapted them, right? I mean, no. am I wrong? Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. Talk about that a little bit because put put my mind at ease a little for, bit. For those that don't know, George R. R. Martin hasn't even finished writing the Game of Thrones set of books. So they their adaptions do take very heavily from that. They combine characters because you just don't have time for all that. the characters that are in the book. They condense storylines. They make changes. There are characters that they kill off that will last in the that are still alive in the books that they may kill in season two or three. They actually reached a point last season I believe, or maybe it was two seasons ago where they got farther ahead than George R. R. Martin. So they've uh, written two seasons That he hasn't even done for books. And my understanding is he's given them some outlines, but then they just took it and went their own way with it. So I think they'll handle that fine. I I don't think that'll be a problem at all. They're more than equipped to do their own thing because they have been. But I also think they're the type of people that if they get some general structure from Lucasfilm, even though I think Kathleen Kennedy has been pretty lenient in letting people do what they want, they'll be able to handle whatever's given to them. One other question that just popped into my head. We had talked about how Star Wars has kind of gotten rid of the misogyny uh, from the original trilogy and from parts of the prequels. Are you worried at all? That's one of the critiques of Game of the Thrones, where the way the treatment of women characters has been, at least in the press, again, I haven't seen it, but it's been a negatively received you know, uh, treatment of women. Are you at all worried that maybe this is going to backtrack at all? I certainly hope not. I, those complaints are certainly very valid in Game of Thrones. There's a prominent scene that a lot of people don't like, me in particular, that I don't think they thought was a rape scene, but the way they filmed it was a rape scene that upset a lot of people, and women are heavily objectified in that show. It fits the world to a certain extent, but also you do think at a certain point that they're throwing in nudity just to throw in nudity because that'll get viewers. I really don't want to see that. I'm not overly concerned because I think Star Wars is established enough that you have a motif and a a, a PG-13 rating and all that but I don't want to go back to Slave Girl outfits and Natalie Portman's ripped shirts and those things that Lucas did. So I hope it's not it's not a step back. I hope we would learn, and with what's going on in Hollywood right now, the success of Wonder Woman, the Me Too movement, all those type of things, that we are hopefully learning some lessons in how we film things. And so in the interest of full disclosure, too, the reason that I haven't really watched the show and the reason that I didn't get through the book is within the first chapter or two, the way that Daenerys' brother talks to her, and she's 14 in the first two uh, chapters i just couldn't take it they age everyone up in the tv show yeah. which they had to to do but yeah it's the the i've read the first two books believe it or not the the books are probably worse than the show is but that's not an excuse for the show the, sure. the show could certainly improve in that fashion the last question that i have for you about this and uh I'd like to get your thoughts is disney announces this merely one day after the han solo trailer is it a strike while the iron is hot sort of thing? And wouldn't this news have made more sense to be released in the longer period between Solo and Episode Nine? There's going to be, after the Solo movie, there's going to be a long dead period before Episode Nine. It occurred to me, like, maybe this is the bad time to announce this. We know that they've made announcements well after the fact that they've been strategic in the past. It's just, the timing kind of sat weird with me. What are your thoughts on that? The day after the Super Bowl or a couple days after the Super Bowl, I don't... I thought was a little odd, but as you said, we don't really have much to hype, concrete to hype, after Solo comes in a few months, and now we almost have too much to hype for, because we're talking, you know, however many movies they're doing, three Ryan Johnson movies, and episode nine, so I think it's good from the standpoint they want us to know all these things are on the horizon, and they're building a Marvel scale movie slate, which I'm guessing is probably the goal but I, it, what it really made me think is is how many movies are we going to be getting in a year right. of Star Wars? Because this is now... I, I'm just going to default to saying that they're going to give these guys three movies. They're giving Johnson three movies, and we have another one in this saga. So that's seven movies. You know, if you're doing one a year, that's that's a ways out to complete these. And I, I have a feeling that being Disney, they're just looking at 
what Marvel's doing continue. I mean, Black Panther will be out by the time this is released, but it isn't out now, but it's tracking at over 400 million. They're just continuing to build steam, and I think Lucasfilm has to be looking at that and going, we can do that too, so let's let's start getting two, three movies, especially if we're veering the universe off in so many different directions that it's not one continuous storyline. Is there any worry to you that maybe some of the rumors about Solo being bad are true and they're trying to get out in front of it. Like, look, we, we signed Ryan Johnson for these three, three movies. We signed these Game of Thrones dudes for these movies. You know, we put J.J. back in charge of Episode Nine. That's kind of what I thought. Maybe that's just me being worried. What are your thoughts on that? I don't think it relates too much to the Solo movie, especially because I think most of the reaction to the Solo trailers has been positive. So I think it's been building a little bit of steam. It, it, if people don't love it, I don't think anyone's going, oh my gosh, this is so much, Solo is so much worse than I thought based on these trailers. So I, I don't think it's that. I think they are going, I think we're going to start seeing just a giant slate. And I think that's what this is leading to is we're going to start seeing two to three movies a year and they're prepping us for that because it's probably not that far off. Which begs another question that I'll ask you to, Ooh, to toss it back. We're flipping it. We're flipping it. That's right. Is three movies a year going to be too much Star Wars? Not at first. Not at first. At first, we'll love it just like we loved Avengers and Captain America, uh, Winter Soldier, and uh, then Age of Ultron, and Thor, and da -da 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 -da. and it was awesome. And then now people are starting to get superhero fatigue. I have not seen Thor Ragnarok yet. I'm waiting until it comes to DVD. I'll buy it on DVD. I'm going to see Black Panther. Black Panther is one of my guys. I'll see Infinity War, but I'm very, I'm a lot more judicious now in what I see in the theater. Doctor Strange, I didn't see in the theater. I also bought it the first day it comes out. So it's kind of like, I make those decisions on what I'm going to, I'm going to purchase all of the Marvel Cinematic Universe because I'm a completist, but I'm very choosy. Didn't even see Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 in the theater. I'll start off seeing everything because it's Star Wars, and I probably like Star Wars more than the MCU, which is, I think, two years ago. If I had said that aloud, I probably would have been shocked, <laughs> but... That was before Star Wars movies really started coming out and made me remember all this stuff. So I, I think at first it'll be a great thing, and then it might have the same effect on other people. I suppose it's just like Marvel. If you keep making good movies, then people will keep coming. Right. And if you make Green Lantern and Suicide Squad, people will stop going. Can we have a quick aside and talk? I know in you know in weeks past we talked about the Solo trailer and, and how that is. I, I, I meant to ask you, and I haven't asked you back when we recorded that, why was it so long for the solo trailer to come out? Do you have any thoughts on why why they waited? Why they, you know, why it's all hush hush and 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 those sorts of things? Yeah, I I think it's just spacing between Last Jedi. Okay. I think they wanted everything to be Last Jedi. You unveil something huge on Super Bowl Sunday when you're looking at a calendar, you know, probably 2 years ago planning these things out or a year ago, you're saying, "Well, Last Jedi's only been out, you know, a little over a month." you know, before the Super Bowl actually happens, or, you know, a month and a half. So, when you look at it through that lens, it, it doesn't seem that long. I mean, Last Jedi's still in theaters when the solo trailer debuted. So, I think it it's really just that. You talking about Green Lantern is what brought this up to me. Green Lantern was, was something that came out with the trailer when the CGI was really, really bad looking. It wasn't finished. And so, what made me think about that is maybe they were, because they're so late in the game, uh, because of the director the director switch, trying to get that cgi done so that it doesn't have the same effect that you know people who saw green lantern were really disappointed by the cgi in that trailer and there's some speculation i think it was just a bad movie there's some people who said it never had a chance because of how you know how much people hated the cgi in it so i i kind of think and the cgi in the in the solo trailer i thought looked great and yeah so i think but you can also cherry pick i mean the cgi might not be all done on the solo trailer but if you are panicked and worried that you need to get something out they could have put a minute together worth of footage to tease us you know a month ago if they really thought they needed that as disaster control mm -hmm. um and just hopefully leave out the bad uncomplete cgi well it's sort of disappointing because i think we we agree on that one so let's move mm -hmm.